In this video, I'll continue with my series of fan art I did for Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. This time, let's paint Lukoa. I'll explain to you the steps I took to finish this watercolor piece from beginning to the end. Since Lukoa is blonde, I'll also share with you some tips on how to paint blonde hair, so let's get started. Although Lukoa only plays a supporting role, she's one of my favorite characters. She's probably the most intelligent and most mature one of all the dragons, but she also has a carefree side and enjoys flirting and teasing Shota, which is really fun to watch. Lukoa also has a really beautiful and sexy human form, long wavy blonde hair, and great body and casual clothes. So for the composition and design, to show this adorable personality of hers and her sexy body, I decided on this three-quarter pose with a mischievous smile. I also paid a lot of attention on her proportion to make sure I capture her features correctly. If you watched my previous videos where I explained the painting process for Sophie and Kana, both have light colored hair, you probably remember that one of the key to have a successful painting of light colored hair is to have a clean and tighter sketch of the hair strands. Blonde hair is really light, and light yellow does not have much depth. So it's very easy to make blonde hair look flat if you don't carefully leave the highlights and add shadows. So there's less margin for error. And since we're not using masking fluid here, we want to plan ahead so we know where the highlights and shadow goes. Now the sketch is completed. And you probably noticed that it's more polished than my usual sketch because I want to make sure I know where each strand goes and I want to make sure the wavy hair is natural looking. So let's start with the skin. It's hard to tell from the anime, but I think a skin color with pink undertone suits blonde hair really well. So for Lukoa, I use my usual quinacridone colors for her skin, but with a little bit more quinacridone burnt scarlet and a little bit less quinacridone gold to make it more on the pink side and less yellow. While putting on this first wash, I also leave out the highlights to give her skin a healthy glow. Here I'm putting down the first wash of her baseball cap. It is a coral red. As I'm putting down the color, I'm mostly considering the highlights and edges like where they should go so that I can leave the paper blank. And I'll worry about the shadows later. Now that the first wash of her skin has dried, I started to add shadows around her bands. This is where the pencil sketch is really helpful. Since we want to keep her blonde hair really bright and clean, we can simply follow the pencil lines and make sure we don't get any skin colors on her hair to muddy it up. I'm also adding blush on her cheeks and shadows on her neck to make her more three-dimensional. What I'm imagining here to determine where to put the shadows is that the light source is coming from left side of her from the sky. Now it's finally time to paint the first wash of her hair. I don't remember what yellow I used here. Well, I should really start writing them down. But judging from the pile of paint on the palette and how bright it looks from the video, I think it might be the Hansa Yellow Light by Daniel Smith, which is their perfect yellow and it's really pure. Blonde hair in real life is never this vivid. But for anime characters, if you want to create beautiful, vibrant blonde, one tip is to use a yellow that is more transparent, so even when you layer multiple layers to make it stronger, it still look airy and light. Watercolor dries lighter, so test it out before you put it onto your painting, to make sure once it dries, it can still reach the vibrancy that you're looking for. Also, Lukoa has a trendy ombre, which goes from blonde to green and then to blue. So here, I'm creating a gradient following her hair strands. For where it's supposed to be green, I first painted in yellow and dropped in blue to mix the green on the paper. Then at the tip of the strands, since I didn't put down any yellow, the blue shows nicely on the paper. This way, since the green is mixed by the two colors I'm using, the gradient looks very natural and cohesive. 
for her horns since they're cylinders with harder texture. When I put down the first wash, I left a long cleaner strip of highlight to show the reflection. And I did darker edges on both sides to describe the volume. And then for her hat, I added the second wash to make it more vibrant. For the second wash of her hair, I'm carefully painting around her face to make sure that the strands around her face are preserved as a lighter color. There is no turning back in watercolor, and yellow is a high staining color. So I'm carefully preserving the light wash and applying the second wash more around the back of her head or the strands underneath to add more depth. I forgot to turn on one of the studio lights, so it looks kind of dark for this clip. But um, anyway, I started to add shadows to the hair. For yellows, I like to use quinacridone gold as shadows. It is dark enough as a shadow color, but also doesn't make the painting look muddy. And it gives a warm glow, which I think goes really well with blonde hair and goes really well with the painting. Lukoa has two different colored eyes, one green and one blue. I wanted to maintain the high vibrancy of this painting and make them echo her hair color as well. So I picked a really bright green and blue that are very similar shades to her hair. Here I'm just putting down the first wash of the green and blue and not worry about where the eyeliner should go. I'm gonna put that down in the next wash once the eye color dries. Here I'm adding more details on her hat. The technique I'm using is mostly wet on wet and we don't need to be too neat here because we want to show the texture that it is a fabric. And I'm adding details on her horns to show the grooves and the rougher and harder texture. Now that I'm pretty happy with how her hair looks, I started to paint her top. Her top is black, and I think I used paint gray here. Since it's much darker than her hair, I carefully painted along the edges of her hair and try not to get any dark paint on the strands. Also, the paint dries so quickly here in Canada as I put it on the paper, especially in this winter weather, and the studio lights make it dries even faster. I have to move really quickly as I don't want to leave any watermarks. So, if you find it too stressful, which I did at the beginning, one option is to mask the hair strands with masking fluid and paint her top first. Then, later on, when you paint in the light color of her hair, you won't need to worry about it bleeds onto the dark color. Or, if you paint in the same order as I did, don't worry about messing up a small area. Just fix it with gouache in the end.
for the background to make blonde hair pop. My favorite choices for vibrant colors are blue and purple. Here I'm using mostly purple because I think it complements her hat really well. And the purple is one of the most used color in this anime's color palette. I occasionally drop in pink and blue to make it more interesting and less flat. Okay, so at this point, most of the painting is done, but I do feel her skin tone is a little bit lacking, maybe a little bit washed out. So I'm strengthening the parts that are in the shadow to make it more substantial and more three-dimensional. To achieve a balance with the rest of the painting, I also feel the whole painting is not as vibrant as I was expected. So I went through each section again to add another wash to get the strength that I'm happy with. As a final step, I'm adding highlights using white gouache on her eyes, hats, and hair. One final easy tip to make blonde hair airy and flowy is to use white gouache to add flying tiny strands. It doesn't have to be the same yellow to match her hair color, but as long as you have some random loose strands flying around, it looks less rigid and adds more motions to the painting. So this is how to paint Lukoa in watercolor and some easy tips to paint beautiful blonde hair. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and learned a few things here and there. If you have any questions, leave me some comments below and I'll see you next time.